name is Hilda and welcome back to my channel for, believe it or not, a sewing video. I'm wearing my Foolish Mortal earrings. Of course, I forgot the name of the creators. It's got Twin Moon in it, but I will have them linked in the description down below so you can find them. And the reason is simple. For all the foolishness that went on in these projects, I feel it's very, very accurate. But first things first. So the three dresses I'm gonna show you have all been made with Patron 101 out of the Buddha Style magazine from May. So from this year, it's a couple of months ago now, but I have found that in Belgium at least, because that's where I'm from, uh, and this is a Dutch language one, by the way, I have found that most magazine shops will have older um, copies still on sale. For as long as they have copies, they will have them out in the stands. So you should still be able to find it if you want. Um, additionally, some of the Buddha websites, I don't know about other languages because I just look at the Dutch ones. I've learned how to sew in Dutch. So I know most of the terminology in Dutch and not in English. So it's easiest for me to just stick with that. So I just look at the Dutch one. But I know that some of the websites will sell PDF patterns of like just a single pattern from the magazine. And that one was on the Dutch side. So just have a look, have a Google, and you might just be able to get the PDF if you can't get the magazine, if you want this one in particular. Now, they come on these very chaotic sheets. I could open them up, but it's just chaos of lines. And then I proceeded to trace all four of the pattern pieces onto just random clear pattern paper. And then I, as you can see, stuck two of the pieces, both front pieces and both back pieces, together with washi tape. And that may all sound very shenanigans -y. Oh, this shenanigans in motion over here, but um, it worked fine. So um, yeah, um, first I made the size 42, because um, Sizing has changed since I last used Burda. <laughs> and well, I have gone up some size as well, admittedly. But um, yeah, I used 42 on the first dress I made, which is this guy. And uh, don't you worry, um, I will talk about every single dress I made and then I will have a clip of me actually wearing it in it. But um, yeah, so I used it on this guy and it fits. It's actually quite a perfect fit. But I feel like if I gain weight again, because I'm a big weight fluctuator due to medication I have to take, this won't fit me anymore. So I figured like, I'm just going to wear them all too big. I, I mean, generally, as you can see, this is from next, by the way, I will buy my clothes just too big. I, I stopped carrying a long time ago and at least they fit and they're comfortable. Um, but yeah, so this is probably the more complicated patterning one of the three um, because I wanted to have it half white and half black spider web and then alternating and it does the same in the back as you can see on both the bodice and the skirt part. Now um, there is a skirt part pattern in the actual pattern. I completely ignored it and simply made the skirt bit a bell skirt which is basically two rectangles. So you just basically measure out the length from, well, make the bodice first and then put it on um, and then measure down to where the length of you, the skirt you want. Just measure it out on the fabric, add um, seam allowance and um, yeah, just stick them together. Now what I did, I put these giant ass plastic zippers in the back and um, usually quite contrasty as well. And I did that for two simple reasons. One, I have really bad joints. This allows me to very easily grab the zipper <laughs> and put this on myself. Um, this is a zipper that separates, so it's always like a matter of making sure it's stuck in there, like zipped up a little bit. But yeah, it's easy for me to put it on myself. Um, it's just stitched on, so it's also a design choice and a cool design element, I feel. Um, I probably could just put this one up better, but um, 
With this dress, I was just so enthusiastically about having a cute dress that I just went in with more enthusiasm than common sense and skill. Well, I can't so fairly well, but this is just a project where I went all in. I just wanted it finished. You can do these in 24 hours. Like if you get up early enough and you start early enough, you will have it finished by the end of the day. Um, probably by the end of the afternoon. But um, if you if you know what you're doing at least remotely well, if you if you have at least some experience sewing, that's what I will say. It's your first project, probably it'll take you a couple of days. But um, yeah, so uh, this is made out of duvet cover. I, I am not making this up. I got this duvet cover on Next uh, last year. They're still available. I'm not sure they're still available in the largest option, which is what I got. It's, it's, it's like a humongous slab of, of cotton. And it's really good quality cotton. I believe the brand is called Copenhagen. Um, yeah, so you get the white on one, like one side and the, uh, the black on the other. And you also get two quite big pillowcases, which I did not use for this. I'm using them as actual pillowcases. Um, but yeah, so um, I doubled this. I mean, you have to line the bodies anyway, but um, I made sure to line it in um, contrasting bits as well, just because it's a duvet cover. It can be quite sheer. So that is why the skirt is lined as well. Um, this is all overlocked uh, because I have a serger. For those curious, my sewing machine is a Bernina 1008, um, so the 1008, and my overlock is also a Bernina, but I will have the type up on screen because I can't remember. I don't use it very often, so I, I have no idea. I also have a vintage Bernina, which I'll be setting up soon. It used to be my mom's, so um, I'm gonna see if it still works or if it needs maintenance, I think it's fine, but I digress in any case. Um, for the record, there will not be sewing clips in this video because I have not figured out how to set up yet. And um, I don't know if anybody wants to see me sew. Uh, I don't really habitually sew over pins, so there's at least that. Sometimes I forget to take one out, but it's not a habitual thing. Um, but yeah, um, I have sewn on little pockets as which is practical. They're not giant, but I can fit stuff in. Um, this is the only one that I made that actually has pockets, and I will explain why in a second. I do love pockets. But yeah, so this is duvet cover. This is a, oh, it's a size is between medium and, and a large, I would say. But uh, yeah, so um, this is the dress, and here will be a clip of me actually wearing the dress. So my next dress is um, <laughs> Beth Hazes with a fiery passion, the passion of a thousand suns. But uh, there's a bit of a story to this fabric. I saw this fabric on Joanne's last year, like at the start of the Halloween season. That was one of the first fabrics I saw in people's like code orange videos like saying like oh I saw this and um at Joanne's and then they filmed it and put it in their insta stories or whatever and I saw it and I fell in love with it and I was like this fabric is amazing but for some reason it would not ship to Belgium it flat out wouldn't then a couple of months ago okay fair enough last month I, <laughs> I looked at Joanne's website again and I was like I mean, you know, I'm gonna have a look because like Code Orange has, you know, people have been seeing things at Joanne's. I'm just gonna have a look at the site because I know they ship to Belgium. And then it said like, what the price is what you pay, customs included. And I was like, well, that is interesting. And then I found that same fabric half off and it shipped to Belgium. And I was like, 
I don't know why you did it last year, but half of, I can wait, you know? So, so I got three yards of this. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it is actually iridescent. It has a pink and a green shift to it. I have used the most obnoxious orange zipper I could find as a design um, element. And um, also for the ease of, you know, putting it on, like I explained before. And um, yeah, there were um, some issues. <laughs> now, this fabric is basically, I will show the skirt because that's not lined. It's basically a cotton. It, it started out being a stiff white cotton. And then it had the pumpkins and the iridescent printed on it. So this is a solid extra layer to your fabric. Now, the thing is, it makes it very stiff. I, 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 I feel it's like both the Halloween atom punk and um, a candy wrapper. <laughs> That's kind of what it is. It wrinkles like no tomorrow, like nobody's business. If you wash this, I have thrown it in a rinse wash after I was finished making it because the cats had sat on it and, you know, it was so wrinkly. You can iron this. I did iron it inside out, but I did test iron like a little scrap on the iridescent part and it did not stick to my iron. I was very surprised. Um, but yeah, no, you can iron it. I would advise to wear to iron it inside out. Um, so there's that. But just know, every time you wash your garment, you will have to iron it. Um, there's no avoidance in it. I have used um, some old quilt cotton that I had for a project, from a past project, from a long, long, long ago past project, which is white with pink skulls and bubbles for the um, body lining because let's let's be real here you can uh, you cannot see it anyway so what gives you know it doesn't matter you can um if you want to save on like really nice fabric uh just use a lining for the bodice from something else you know you can you can use an old sheet you can just buy some really cheap cotton to line it with nobody's gonna see it but you uh, a theory at least. Um, so, you know, might as well. Um, so yeah, uh, I used list leftover cotton and this one, I actually sewed nicely for the most part. You know, um, I will link Rachel Maxi's video where she does it uh, in the description so you can see how it's done. But basically, if you put the wrong sides together, you can just like fold it. When you fold it the right way, the... Um, seam line will be on the inside so you don't have visible top stitching here there is visible top stitching on my uh, spider web dress and also with my spider web dress i just shoved the gathered part of the skirt inside the two layers of the bodice and then stitched them shut um because you're gonna have top stitching here anyway um rather than having this where you neatly stitch it on um the lining so the difference is um it's frankly i feel it's a personal preference this is the proper way to do it if you buy a dress or at least it is that way on the ones i have from say uniqlo um if you buy a dress it's done like this um if you do it like that the difference is you will not have that harsh line of gathering because it can be quite scratchy depending on the fabric onto your skin. So if you just want to chuck this over a bra, that will be like more comfortable or just over your body. I mean, wear what you like underwear wise. Who am I to tell you what to do? Um, so it is what you prefer. This one is really big on me because I made this in the XL size and um, it's very, very comfortable. It's also very warm due to the entire print layer. So this is to my advantage. Also, the, the other reason I did it, because I figured that this fabric was going to be so warm. I did it because I would want to wear a really thick sweater underneath in winter. And, and I will just wear a petticoat under the skirt. And then I can wear this literally year long, as long as it's not too hot. Because I figured out if it's heat wave properties outside, this is just gonna kill me stone dead so um yeah that's what i did with this one the fabric was easier to work with than i thought it would be because you can iron it 
even though it was also like no but Jesus, it was fairly easy to do the gathering on the skirt. Again, like with the other one, um, and with the next one as well, I ignored the skirt pattern piece and just attached the bell skirt to it. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, yeah, well, this bears mentioning. I have stitched all the seams you cannot see using a polyester, I think, uh, a synthetic in any case, Guterman thread. The, those are the threads that are easiest for me to get because I suppose our version of Joanne's more or less uh, is called Veritas and um, Veritas sells good Guterman thread. So there's Veritas pretty much everywhere, including in my town, which is a small town. So. For me, it's just easier to go to Veritas and buy the Guterman thread than order thread online and potentially have to pay shipping and whatnot. So what I did, all the invisible thread is done with that, which was a very good plan. Now, I did forget to um, attach the straps as well before I turned it right side out. So I had to top stitch the straps. Initially, I had used a silver. Let me go get it and show it to you. So. All my invisible stitching was done with this guy, which the camera doesn't want to focus on apparently. This guy! <laughs> um, it's a polyester thread. Yeah, I thought it was. I would give you the number, but the little paper has the number on it, has come off. I've had this for a very long time. And then all the top stitching that you could actually see was initially done with this silver thread. It's very pretty, it's very sparkly. It is the 7001. And yeah, this is also a polyester, but this snaps like no tomorrow, like nobody's business. So um, after the first time I washed it, I had one of the straps coming undone, meaning I, on the inside, like the little bit I had longer, because I always leave a little bit longer in case I have to lengthen them again. I just tucked it shut with contrasting thread and it's in the lining, nobody will see it. And then um, one of the zipper pieces uh, literally come off. I uh, Basically, this was open all over again and I was like, well. So uh, I ended up sewing it shut with the, um, the, the gray one and then going over with the silver one just to get that element in again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this fabric was Kind of both a pain to work with and not because, you know, just the properties of it. And also because it is so stiff, it kind of basically nearly stands up on its own. I did not add pockets um, because I figured like you will be able to look into the pockets. And if I make them out of the same, same material, they will just like be this, these weird looking gaping holes of pockets, so to speak. And I didn't want to sew them up for like the same reason because they just permanently be like open. Um, so yeah, sadly, no pockets in this dress for uh, fabric weirdness. Wow, I said that weird. Fabric weirdness reasons, words. Anyway, so yeah, that's dress number two. And this is me wearing dress number two. final dress is the one with the least design issues <laughs> of all of them mostly because by that point I had pretty much figured out what I was doing and so these straps are properly attached on the inside there's no top stitching on this part at all um, this has also been attached the bodies to the skirt the correct way to do it um, Meaning I do have to wear a top underneath because otherwise it is a little bit scratchy. I have left the straps um, on this side a little bit longer. So if I have to lengthen them, if I want to wear this in winter, I can. Um, I should have done a button system like the Uniqlo ones where you can just make them longer or shorter, shorter moving a, uh, a button, you know, with buttonholes and stuff. But I could not be bothered sewing buttonholes by hand because I hate doing them on the machine, but I also hate doing them by hand. This guy has a 
dark brown contrasting zipper, uh, which is the most matching one. I also could have gotten a black one because of the black stripes uh, separating all the different images. Um, but I like the brown as well because a lot of the images have a lot of brown in them. I have used this literally also from a leftover nice Art Nouveau um, cotton fabric, also a quilting cotton that I had lying around. And a good thing I did because I got two yards of this fabric. I got this on a quilter um, and I can't remember the name of the design studio and the name of the fabric, but I will have them up on screen. I will look it up and I will link to all the fabrics in the description. Um, but yeah, I, I saw this and I fell in love with it, but I knew I was going to have to pay customs. So I figured I'd keep the price as low as possible. So I only got two yards and I literally used up everything. If I ever want to take the bodies off and turn this into a skirt, I will have to use the straps for the waistband, which is also why they are this wide. Um, so yeah, I simply did not have fabric left to even consider making pockets out of. So this has no pockets either. And next time, even though I can make a skirt out of two yards, I will probably get two and a half yards just to have that extra fabric to make the straps, set some aside if I want to make a waistband and, you know, be able to make pockets. This, this fabric is amazeballs. I mean, look at it. So vintage Halloween images. Um, I think there's five different ones. Potentially six, but yeah, super cool. I I just fell in love with it, and I I kind of feel sad that I just didn't pay more in customs and just got like five yards or something of this. But uh, yeah, uh, apparently there's also another version that has white or ivory stripes rather than the black ones, but it wasn't available when I bought it, and I like this one way better anyway um, because I find like it contrasts and separates them nicely. Whereas the other one just kind of like blends in with all the white in that square, but that's just my personal preference. I'm just putting it out there. But yeah, this one, um, the straps gape a little bit when I wear it, so I will probably take them off again at some later point when I'm doing something else so I don't have to lug a giant sewing machine out of each storage space and onto the table, you know, just to do straps. I'll do it when I'm doing another project as well. So otherwise it's just annoying. Um, but yeah, at one point I will probably change that. If I end up buying more of this, if it ends up on Joanne where I don't have to pay customs basically, um, I will probably open up the seams and add pockets um, because I'd quite like to have pockets, but at this point, I just don't have the fabric to add pockets at all. So yeah. Um, and here will be me wearing this dress. that was it. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've made. I know this isn't a traditional sewing video, but I hope it was still interesting. And I hope I managed to uh, explain how I altered the pattern and whatnot and chose sizing. Um, the, the sizing, the, the fit that they give you is fairly accurate. So if you look at the, the sizing table and you stay within those measurements, they're fairly all right, um, at least for these dresses. But you know, if, if you have other questions, please feel free to leave them down below in the questions section and I will get back to you um, and do my best to answer. Uh, like I said before, I am far from an expert. If you want to see experts, um, I, I, you know, I, I recommend other people that are not me. I just sew for the funsies and I wanted a couple of new Halloween summer dresses. So I've just went and made myself some. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I do have occasional other sewing projects that I have out on my Instagram, which will be on screen, but you will be able to find it in the description as well. 
And um, I think I will do another sewing video about an overskirt I made. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I hope you're not you're not you know fed up with me sewing quite yet because there might be more of it. I will do my best to figure out a setup for my sewing machine or one of the sewing machines at least. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. There are cats in this video. Um, if there weren't at the beginning, there will be at the end. I'm I'm sort of like filming this bit and then filming all the other bits afterwards. So it might not seem, you know, it might seem fairly well thought out, but to get up to this point, <laughs> but it's, you know, it is how it is. This channel is called Shenanigans in Motion for a reader reason words. It is generally pure and total chaos. But yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you want to stick around for more shenanigans in motion. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!